fascinating finding is that very few skeptics change their minds in favor of telepathy purely by reviewing the evidence. Very few indeed. Those who readily accept the evidence have already experienced telepathy or know someone who has. So the scientific evidence is pleasant confirmation to them, but apparently very baffling and frightening to the private skeptics which include some scientists, vociferous angry folk, who it seems don't want a paranormal experience, resisting the very notion, denouncing those who happily live with the paranormal, and that is most of us, the great majority. And here is a mini-essay on this question, of dubious things we are led to believe, and what subjects our society taboos. One commentator makes a stand, YouTuber, by a chess one. I am one of the few students of the paranormal. My goal is to show people that convincing evidence of life after death has existed for more than 100 years, that the general perception of life and death in our society is unnecessarily depressing and simply wrong, and that psychic and mediumistic abilities are, deliberately, being misrepresented by most scientists. A degree in parapsychology is one of the things I certainly don't want to achieve. According to Dean Radin, pure parapsychologists do not exist, as it is just an interdisciplinary science. It means you need to get a degree in either conventional psychology or one of the physical sciences first. Afterwards up to six years work experience in your field of expertise is recommended before joining the controversial field of psychical research. And then the real trouble sets in poor research funding, too few international colleagues to replicate your findings, peer review bias, and the excommunication from scientific conferences, as it happened to Dean Radin and Brian Josephson. And you know what? I don't believe this will ever change. The phenomena parapsychologists study are produced or received by the deepest core of our self, which can only be activated through either intense year-long meditation, or is already developed in gifted psychics. The latter only rarely are willing to participate in tests. Why? Many of them cannot produce the same phenomena in a lab which flow so easily in a home setting. The same problem with mediums. I don't think I would want to be part of this battle. Moreover, I wouldn't even want to study a physical science. Although once very interested in hard science like biology and astronomy, I became rather disillusioned after finding out that the basis is flawed, as most theories of experimental psychology and biology are grounded on the assumption the genetic code was churned out by a chemical soup. There is a simple fact of logic that says if a certain premise is wrong, then all conclusions drawn from that are also wrong. And to emphasize the point made here, by Biochess 1, about psychic phenomena being hard to nail down, this author, Kimbo99, just had a brilliant flash, in the mind's eye, of a friend's image. It was completely out of context, with my then current thoughts, making it striking and attention-getting, and lo, and behold, a few minutes later he turns into my driveway. This is simply telephone telepathy, carried on without a phone statistically proven in large studies, well above chance, experienced by millions, and in my 20 years, in a call center, I personally experienced telephone telepathy thousands of times. It is never para-normal to me, it is just normal daily life for me, as it is for millions around the world. Yet it's a source of everlasting grief to a few deprived skeptics, and thus their much irrational aggression toward the rest of us, the majority of society commentator, by a chess one, suggests from experience, this is unlikely to ever change, based on the current situation. But there may be a new way shaping up. If we can't get psychic events into the laboratory, a new opportunity to turn the entire world into a laboratory has emerged that would provide massive overwhelming proof of telephone telepathy on a global scale. The Nokia mobile phone company has revealed it may produce a downloadable app which could test millions of people's ability to guess who is calling them, and the results would be logged into some international database. Large studies have already proven way above chance guesses scored by average people in call centers. Nokia's database could test millions of phone users over years, in fact decades, to finally establish telephone telepathy as common and mundane in our daily lives. So what's to be afraid of? Most of us do this already. If massive evidence is out in the open, perhaps it will become less of a social taboo. For some more of us, at least.
but I still side with biochips when I'm skeptics. I suppose the social minority of vociferous pseudoskeptics, including many pseudoscientists, would still practice their favorite good old-fashioned, evidence-free denialism, and denunciation, and fulmination, and bombast. You can't win them all.